So now we're going to be studying chapter 11, section 2, which is all about the gas laws. Now the gas laws are mathematical relationships between a gas's volume, its temperature, its pressure, and the actual amount of gas there, which is going to be represented by the letter N. The first of these laws that we're going to be discussing is Boyle's Law, which covers the relationship between pressure and volume of a gas. Now Robert Boyle did some experiments where he took a certain container filled with an amount of gas and he cut the size of the container in half but kept the same amount of gas in there. And what he found was that the pressure went up double. So that for half the volume the pressure doubled. Similarly, if he doubled the volume the pressure was cut in half. And this is easy to understand because pressure is just force per unit area. And if you cut the volume down, you're getting more molecules per unit area and therefore more collisions with this wall and therefore more pressure. Now this relationship was easy enough to model mathematically. It just says that the pressure and the volume always equal some constant in the case of his theoretical example of doubling the pressure and having the volume, that constant would be one. However, it follows that for all gases, uh, no matter what units you're measuring the pressure and volume in, you'll always get a constant for that amount of gas at the constant temperature. So, if you were to take one gas at the initial conditions of pressure one and volume one, you would get a constant. And then if you were to change one variable, the other would have to change so that they too would equal this constant. So what you can see is that for any given amount of gas that stays at a constant temperature, it follows the relationship that its initial pressure times its initial volume will equal a later pressure times a later corresponding volume. Moving on now to Charles's law, which relates the volume and the temperature of a gas. A French scientist by the name of Jacques Charles discovered that heating a gas that is increasing its temperature and keeping the pressure constant also led also led rather to an increase in the volume. Using close experimentation he determined that for each degree Celsius that he increased the temperature the gas rose in volume by about one 273rd of its initial volume. And this was in reference to the gas's size at STP, that is when it was at zero degrees Celsius. However, this relationship works if you cool down a gas as well. But you can't use a negative temperature for this relationship because you cannot have a negative volume. So chemists had to use what is known as an absolute temperature scale. And the temperature scale we use for absolute temperature is degrees Kelvin. Now the distance between degrees Kelvin is the same as those between degrees Celsius. However, degrees Kelvin have no negative temperature. It starts at what is known as absolute zero and only goes up from there. Now absolute zero degrees Kelvin is a theoretical point at which there is no movement in molecules at all. No vibration. Molecules stop moving. Now when you do some experimentation and plot volume against temperature, you get the relationship that a raise in temperature is equivalent directly to a raise in volume according to some conversion factor K, which has to do with the pressure and number of molecules within the gas. But now it's quite easy to see why you have to use a Kelvin uh, measurement for the temperature instead of a measurement in degrees Celsius. And that's because if you were to say have a gas at negative 23 degrees Celsius, this K would have to change to have a negative in front of it so that you would get a positive volume because otherwise if you used a negative temperature and didn't change the constant 
then you would end up with a negative volume. So instead, chemists just use an absolute temperature scale that is Kelvin that starts at zero and can only go upwards. As you can see, uh, there is a conversion constant involved within Charles's law, that is the K, just like there is in Boyle's law. So we can say that this constant, after doing some algebra, is V over T. And this means that an initial volume and temperature will give you this constant, and then a change in either one, keeping the other variables constant. That is, if you change it to V2 and whatever the corresponding temperature is, that will also equal K. So, because these two Ks are equal, we can once again, just as we did with Boyle's law, set the initial conditions equal to the secondary conditions. And in this manner, if we knew three of the values, we'd be able to solve for a value without having to do an experiment. Moving on now to cover Gay-Lussac's law, which you may have guessed already covers the relationship between a gas's pressure and its temperature. Now, a French scientist by the name of Gay-Lussac discovered in the early 1800s that as you increase the temperature, the pressure also goes up, given that the volume and number of molecules and such are kept constant. And this is easy to visualize because, let's say you have, I don't know, a glass full of a gas of some kind. And remember that this gas is hitting the side of the ca container uh, regularly around the whole thing and that's what the pressure of the gas is. Now if you increase the temperature, that is, you increase the kinetic energy of these molecules and get them going faster and faster, what ends up happening is that they hit the side of the container with more force and because pressure is just force per unit area and they're still hitting over the same unit area, this increase in force leads to an increase in pressure as well. And just as we saw with Charles' law where volume and temperature increase constantly relating to one another, uh, pressure and temperature follow the same relationship where P equals KT, that is an increase in the temperature, remember in Kelvin because otherwise you'd have a negative pressure which isn't possible, leads to a direct increase in the pressure as well. And you can rearrange this however you want to have P over T equals K and once again you can see that an initial P1 and T1 will lead to this constant and a secondary P2 and the corresponding temperature that you've changed it to uh, will also lead to this constant. So once again we can say that P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, much in a similar way that we did with Charles's law. Now Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Gay-Lussac's law are very good if you can keep one of either the pressure, volume, or temperature uh, constant. However, you're often going to run into situations where all three of these are changing at any given time. So we need a law that can express the relationship between the pressure, volume, and temperature for a fixed amount of gas at any given time. And that is what is known as the combined gas law. And if you look at the positions of the variables in each of the earlier equations, relative to the constant, you can probably guess what that gas law is. For example, you can see that the pressure is in the numerator each time and the temperature in the, is in the denominator, etc. And if you anticipate this relationship and do the math, you will correctly find out that the relationship between these variables is the pressure times the volume over the temperature is always a constant for any given amount of gas. And because this K is a constant for whatever given value of gas you're using, uh, we can do exactly what we did earlier where we take the initial conditions and through conversion with this K we can set them equal to some later conditions. And if we know the pressure and volume later, we can then determine the temperature later 
using this k. And you can just cancel this out and you'll end up with one equal sign in the middle. One thing you may have already noticed is that if you hold one of these constant, you end up with one of the initial laws that we started with. For example, if you uh, were to have a variable pressure and volume, but keep the temperature constant, that is, it could come over here and be part of this K, then you would just end up with pressure and volume equals some different K. So let's say this is K1 and this is K2. But if you hold one of the variables constant, you end up with either Boyle's law, Charles law, or Gay-Lussac's law, depending on which variable you decide to keep constant.